If you have weird hormonal issues, if you have weight gain, if you have fatigue and you just can't quite put your finger on what's going on, you might have PCOS. And if your doctors aren't aware of how to diagnose, they're not aware of how to treat this, you're going to end up getting pushed on birth control because you have period concerns and you're going to feel worse one, two, even five years down the road because we're not addressing what is actually going on with your body for you to be having these symptoms. So let's dive into the seven signs that you might have PCOS. Hi, I'm Dr. Bala. I'm a naturopathic doctor and I specialize in women's hormonal health and I help you have periods where you don't need to rely on birth control and you can tackle your symptoms naturally. A lot of women that I see and work with are coming to me misdiagnosed, untreated for period concerns and they might have even been dismissed by their doctors being told that everything looks normal when they feel miserable and they have no idea what is going on with their periods. The first one is irregular periods. If your cycles are unpredictable, if you go 30 days one month, 60 days another cycle, if you could go six months without a period, you have no idea when your periods are coming. This is a big sign that you might have something going on with your androgens, with your blood sugar, that might be that underlying PCOS diagnosis. Irregular ovulation and ovulation, these are a hallmark of PCOS. So how are we going to solve this problem? We're going to work on why you're not ovulating. The biggest driver of ovulation often comes down to testosterone levels or your androgen levels at large. So testosterone, DHT, DHEA, any of those can be factoring into why you might not be ovulating and why you might not be having adequate estrogen levels to trigger ovulation. So we have to look at your androgen levels and whether or not you are ovulating regularly. So if you find that your periods are completely unpredictable and you go for a really long time without having a period. That is a sign that you might have PCOS. The second sign is you have persistent cystic acne on your cheeks, on your jaw, all over your face. That is really deep, painful cystic acne that just is persistent. You have tried the topical things. You've gone to the dermatologist. You're not able to see that change. You might even be considering Accutane. I'm going to say a side note, a lot of the women that I work with who have been on Accutane one, two, multiple rounds have a ton of liver metabolism issues later on. So if you are considering Accutane, let's try these other things first to see where your cystic acne is coming from. A lot of times it could be because of excess androgens, just like with anovulation, when we have high testosterone, DHT or DHEA levels, those are going to interfere with sebum production. You have a much oilier skin. That's going to cause more acne and you're going to have a tougher time getting rid of it. We may also be dealing with a lot of gut inflammation, a lot of gut dysbiosis when it comes to PCOS. I often see this in women with PCOS and honestly, women with hormonal issues at large. And that is going to cause a lot of cystic acne. So if you're noticing it's particularly particularly on your cheeks, particularly on your jaw or your chin. Any of those could be gut related or androgen related and often can be a big sign that yes, you might have something like PCOS going on. The third sign is unwanted hair growth. If you notice that you are growing a full on beard in your chin area, in your jawline, on your neck, if you're noticing chest hairs, I have worked with women who have had all of these symptoms and they're like, why am I growing so much hair? And it's not just, oh, I have more peach fuzz. I have a little bit more hair than usual. It is dark, thick hair on your chin, your jaw, your neck, your chest. This is another telltale sign of PCOS because again, of those higher androgen levels, what is going on with your body and how is it converting that estrogen maybe into testosterone? Has testosterone getting converted into estrogen? What is going on with DHEA, DHT? I'm just going to keep repeating these labs because a lot of times these aren't tested. Number four is hair loss or hair thinning in particularly kind of in the front of your head in the temple area. That is typically a sign associated with insulin resistance and what we see in PCOS. So this is going to be marked specifically by high testosterone and DHT levels. So supporting this, we might consider something like zinc. We might consider something like saw palmetto. We might consider your gut health as well because gut inflammation, gut dysbiosis are also going to be playing a huge role in diffuse hair loss. If you notice like the hair loss is everywhere. I'm just shedding a bunch of hair. That may often be from inflammation, from gut, something going on there. If you're noticing it just in the crown of your temples, that may be more androgen related. You might have a little bit of both. I often see that in women with PCOS where we have gut issues, inflammatory issues, and androgen issues. Number five is unexplained weight gain or difficulty losing weight, particularly in your abdomen. If you are finding it so hard to lose weight, 
to be able to see that scale move at all to get rid of that belly fat, that is telling me you likely have something with your blood sugar going on. You might have some insulin resistance. You might be pre-diabetic. There's something happening with your blood sugar that is causing you to gain weight, particularly in your abdomen. And that is something that we're going to want to focus on is your blood sugar regulation. What's going on with have your fasting insulin levels been tested? Has your A1C and your fasting glucose been tested? And what is going on with your blood sugar on a day to day? And we're going to get to that in a minute with number six and seven. But if you are noticing that you are just, you're doing all the things like you used to, you're working out, you're eating right, you're getting your steps in and you're like, I just have this weight in my belly that is not going anywhere. That's a huge sign that we need to work on a blood sugar regulation and that you may have some level of insulin resistance. And that is another sign that you may be dealing with PCOS because if all of these, if you're like, yep, check, 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 check to all of these, that is when I often see, yes, this likely is PCOS. You have weight gain, you have the hair loss, you have the acne, you have the irregular periods. All of these are checking the boxes that you likely have something like PCOS burrowing underneath. So number six is going to be fatigue and blood sugar crashes. If you notice you get really hangry before your meals, if you notice that you're feeling really hungry, craving snacks, craving carbs, craving sugar all the time, And once you eat them, you crash. You are like, I am so hangry. I'm so grumpy. I can't stand everyone around me. You get that snack that you've been craving, that you've been wanting. You eat it and you're like, I need to sit on the couch. I need to go lay down. I need to take a nap. All of these are telling me your blood sugar is not staying stable throughout the day. So that is that spike and crash that you're getting all day long is causing you to have mood swings, is causing you to have low energy, is causing your your afternoon crash, and it's causing you to crave more carbs and sugar for that quick energy fix, but then you're just going to crash again, then you're going to want more carbs and sugar again. So it becomes this vicious cycle and we're not supporting our blood sugar. So that's where we're really going to focus on getting a lot of protein, getting a lot of fiber to help with satiety to help you feel full longer. That's what satiety is. And to help with gastric emptying, to slow that down so that your blood sugar is staying stable. We're not getting the spike and the crash. We're getting a sustained release of that blood sugar and that insulin over the course of the day. So you're not getting spikes in your mood, in your energy, in your blood sugar. And lastly, that brings me to number seven, which are mood swings, depression, anxiety, all of those mood symptoms, and especially if they're fluctuating on a day-to-day. So forget your cycle right now. And think about how your moods are doing on a day-to-day. So if you wake up and you're like, I'm feeling good, then you eat something, you crash. Then you're craving sugar and carbs. Then you eat something, you crash. You're craving sugar and carbs. And you feel irritable. You feel moody. You feel grumpy. You feel anxious. You feel low. All of these are, and they are up and down throughout the day, all of those moods. That is telling me your blood sugar needs some stabilization. So just like we talked about, I want you to focus on 30 grams of protein per meal. I want you to focus on getting lots of fiber. So that's going to be 30 grams per day of fiber. So 8 to 10 grams per meal is what you're shooting for. And that is going to help you stay full. That's going to help with that blood sugar. You're not going to notice those crashes. You're going to notice more energy. You're not going to feel like you just need to lay down, sit down. You're going to want to move. You're not going to be craving sugar and carbs because you're going to feel satisfied. You're going to feel full. You're going to have the energy that your body is craving and you're not going to have the crashes that you are trying to avoid. So if you resonated with any of these signs, don't panic. PCOS is very manageable. I work on this all the time with so many different women and you don't need to rely on birth control. You don't have to use metformin as your first line for any of these symptoms. There are lots of things that we can do to support your body and I want to help you get there. The key is really just understanding your body's unique needs. All of us are different. Even if you struggle with all these symptoms, even if you have PCOS, it might look different from one person to another. How we regulate this girl's blood sugar versus your blood sugar is going to be different. So it's really important to understand what your body is asking for, what your body is needing, where your hormones are at, what labs that you've had done and where your body is with all of these things so that we know what supplements are going to be best, what nutritional changes are going to be best, what lifestyle changes are going to be best for you. So let me know in the comments if you've experienced any of these symptoms and what you've tried or what you're looking to try next. And we can talk about those there. Don't forget to like and subscribe. It's free for you and it helps me create more content and more information for you to access easily.